Last time we finished the logic of our application, and now it's time to put on our Docker heads and get ready to sail in the deployment waters. But before we start sail, we focus on building some Docker ships for our backend and frontend in this video. Today's agenda. We'll talk a bit about the Docker, then we'll set it up for the backend, same for the frontend, but we'll also configure environment variables for it, then we'll watch how backend and frontend Docker containers work together. So, Docker. Docker is a powerful platform that simplifies the process of developing, running, and deploying applications. It allows packaging an application and its dependencies into a standardized unit for deployment. Think of Docker as a virtual machine or self-contained operating system tailored specifically to your application. Unlike a traditional operating system, Docker includes only what's necessary for application to run efficiently. It will be application code, dependency, system tools, libraries, and others. As an example, if you're using a Linux distribution and get used to nano command to edit files, you may be surprised that it's not installed in your Docker container, because your application doesn't require it to run. So again, only what's necessary for the application is installed, no more or less. Docker comprises many components, but two key concepts to grasp are Docker image and Docker container. Docker image is constructed from a set of instructions defined in a Docker file. These instructions specify the parent image to use, install necessary libraries and dependencies, configure production-ready settings, and include the application code and required configuration files. Docker container, on the other hand, is an executable instance of a Docker image. Essentially, a Docker image serves as a blueprint, while a Docker container is an instance created from that blueprint. Each container operates as a separate, lightweight process isolated from other containers, ensuring consistency and portability in cross environments. Another thing to mention is a Docker Compose tool. It's used to manage multi-container Docker applications effectively. As some applications may consist of different parts, like front-end, back-end, databases, like Postgre, MongoDB, or worker processes, like Celery, Docker Compose enables us to start and manage such applications with just a single command. All we have to do is to write a YAML configuration file where we will define our services. All right, that was a quick Docker overview. It's important to note here that Docker has additional components, like Docker Engine, Docker Host, and Docker Daemon, among others. Also, while Docker shares similarities with virtual machines, there are distinctions between the two if we delve deeper into their definitions. However, I think the provided explanation is enough to have a basic comprehension of Docker. Well, next thing, let's install Docker. Right now, it's very convenient to do, as you don't need to install Docker and Docker Compose separately. You may just install Docker Desktop, it contains everything you need to start now. Open Docker Desktop. It's like opening your fridge. Empty, but full of potential. For now, there will be no containers, images, and volumes. But don't worry, we'll create them. After this, let's verify that Docker and Docker Compose are working by running two simple commands to check the version. Let's start updating the backend. First, we'll add a Docker file. We'll specify Python image as a parent. Then we'll set Python unbuffered environment variable to true. This way, Python output will be sent straight to the terminal. As a result, we can see our application output in real time. Then we'll set a working directory in the container. After this, update our system and install two libraries. Then we'll copy poetry files by project tomo and poetry log. Then we'll install poetry and project dependencies. Please note that we won't create a virtual environment inside the container, and we also won't install dev dependencies. After this, we'll copy the project files into the created working directory. Then we'll expose the port and run our server using ubicorn. Please notice that when we run the server locally, we specify this reload flag, but we don't do this inside the Docker file as it's not recommended for production. Then let's create a Docker Compose file. For the backend, we'll have two services here, the backend application and MongoDB. Let's define backend service configuration. First, in the build, we specify the Docker file is in the same folder as Docker Compose. Then a command to start the server. As the Docker Compose is used for the local development, we specify the reload flag here. Then we specify the volumes. We will map our current folder to the code folder in the Docker container. As a result, when we update the current folder, the code folder in the Docker container will be updated as well. Then we will map ports. The port 8001 on our local host will be connected to port 8000 on Docker container. Then we specify that our backend container depends on the database container. Then we will set an Docker file which will have environment variables for our Docker container. Then we specify MongoDB logic. As we don't have a custom Docker file for it, we will set image to Mongo. After this, we specify volumes. MongoDB data here will be a custom volume that we'll create. Then we'll set ports mapping, and then we'll define a volume. We need this volume to not lose data when MongoDB container is removed. Next, let's create .n file for Docker. We'll reuse an existing .n file but we'll update MongoDB URL. 
As we will use MongoDB from Docker container. Instead of localhost, we should set MongoDB service name, in this case DB. Please pay attention to this host update, as it's very important and may save you hours of debugging. In our Docker file, we have a command to copy the project files into container. But we don't really need all those files there, especially virtual environment and different caches. So let's create a docker ignore file and specify which files docker should ignore. It's like git ignore file, but for docker. Now let's try to run our backend using docker. I open the terminal and go to the backend folder. Then I run docker compose build command to build docker image for the backend. You may notice that it follows steps from the docker file. Once it's finished, we will be able to see the image in the docker desktop. And here it is. Now let's run our backend using docker compose app command. Besides the backend application, it will also set up a MongoDB here, as we specified in docker compose YAML file. Now one more image is shown in the docker desktop. If we go to the container section, we can see our two Aralyn containers. Let's check our backend from the browser. If you open localhost 8000, it won't work. That's because it's 8000 port on the docker container, not on our local system. To access it from the local system, we should use the mapped port 8001. And here it is. If we get the list of games, it will be empty. Let's create a game. Let's run list games again, and we can see our game. You may notice in the end of docker that we set MongoDB port as 27 or 17. In the docker compose, we mapped it to 27 or 18. Where is it used, you may ask? So, nowhere at the time. But we did this to be able to see the MongoDB data from DB Inspector tools. So, let's use the MongoDB compass to check our MongoDB. In the connection URL, we will specify 27 or 18. Now, if we will check the games, we'll be able to see our game where player 1 is named from Docker. Now let's check our backend docker container more. In the docker file, we specified that the poetry shouldn't create a virtual environment and shouldn't install dev dependencies. Let's check it out. Using docker run command, we'll connect to the backend container. As you can see, there is no virtual environment in our code folder. Let's find out where our dependencies are installed. For this, we run Python and check the syspath. As you can see, the dependencies are installed in the user, local, lib, python, that packages folder. Let's go there. And here are our dependencies. You may notice that main dependencies, like FastAPI, are installed, but dev dependency shouldn't be installed. As an example, you may see that Rav, our dev dependency, is definitely not installed. So, everything is great, our backend application and MongoDB are working great from Docker. Also, we learned how to connect to a running Docker container to check something we want, which may be useful during troubleshooting. One side note, as we finish the Docker setup for the backend, if you'd like to run the backend locally, using make run, you should reinstall the virtual environment. Usually, at least for me, you work either with Docker or locally, so it's not a problem. But if you indeed require both platforms simultaneously, you may try to set up the virtual environment, so the folder is not created locally, but rather in the system files. Basically, what you can do here is try to remove the poetry demo file and run poetry shell command. It should work. Now, let's set up Docker for the frontend. First, we'll create a Docker file. Then I'll add this logic. This Docker file was created by Verso, the company behind Next.js. It aims to show how to use Docker and Next.js together. The link at the top of the file is a GitHub repository that was mentioned by the official Next.js documentation. This way is a verified Docker file that is backed by Next.js creators. 
so we use it in our application. Still, let's take a quick look at it to understand what's going on. First, it sets up a parent image, then installs some library. After this, install our dependencies, then copies the dependencies and the project folder, then creates a production build, then there is environment variables set up and some user management logic. Then some stuff is port. And finally, we will run our server. Then, as mentioned in the GitHub repository with the Docker file, we should update next config. The standalone logic that we added is also mentioned in the Docker file. As you may remember, in our constants we had coded backend base URLs, but for the Docker and for the deployment we need environment variables, so let's set up them. First, we will install a library called next runtime env. Then we will update the layout. According to the library, we should update our head HTML tag. Then the constants. Let's use the library here. To be able to access environment variables, we should add this next public prefix. Now let's add .env file for the frontend. There will be two environment variables for localhost 8000. That is all for the logic, now let's check it out. Let's build a docker image for the frontend. We'll call it but project frontend. Now, one more image is added to the Docker desktop. Let's run the server now. We specify ports mapping and also image name. Similarly to the backend, if you go to the localhost 3000, you won't be able to access it. But if you use a mapped port 3001, you'll be able to see our frontend. The frontend is ready. Now it's showtime. Let's run the backend and see how everything works together. Let's create a game. When we send a request, nothing happened. Let's take a look at the network. The error is that the connection is refused. That's because of the port. We sent request to port 8000. But to access the backend, we should use 8001. So let's update environment variables for the frontend. After the change, we should rebuild the Docker image and restart the server. Now, when we send a request, we get a course error. As you may see, the backend port is correct, 8001. But besides updating frontend, we should also update the backend. In Docker environment variables, we set allowed origins to localhost 3000. But we send a request from localhost 3001, so we need to update environment variables. After the update, we should run backend docker container. And now the request is working. So let's join from the second player and play our game. Our backend and frontend Docker containers are working flawlessly. They are dancing like nobody is watching. Besides, if you run it yourself, you may notice that frontend server runs much faster compared to the local development. That is due to the production magic that was specified in the Docker file. And that's a wrap. Today we've dockerized our application, and now we are ready to take on the high seas of deployment. Yep. In the next video, we will deploy our application to the cloud, for free. See you then, sailors. Wishing you smooth seas and clear skies. Bye!